Hello and welcome to the channel. In the last video I teased about a cool grinder I was going to review and here it is. The Eureka Mignon Special Litter. The Special Litter is a dedicated espresso grinder. It has 55mm flat burrs and a time-based dosing function that works really well. This grinder may not be as well known as the Barazzo Sete or even the Niche Zero, but if you talk to hardcore espresso geeks who follow the scene, they will tell you that this grinder is one of the best options when it comes to espresso grinders for the home user. Up until recently, the market for domestic espresso grinders has been kind of uh, lacking. You had some really big and expensive options that would take up a bunch of space in the kitchen, and usually they would also have crazy amounts of retention. And then in the lower, cheaper range, you'd just have some conical burr grinders that weren't really engineered for espresso. The Special Litter is one of those newer grinders that comes in to bridge that gap in the middle. It's small enough that you can easily have it on the counter, it has a very low retention, and it's also super quiet. The dosing is pretty straightforward while still being flexible, so it kind of checks a lot of boxes. In my opinion, this is one of the most sexy grinders out there. It definitely looks like an espresso grinder, but it has something more modern about it with that square-shaped hopper. As I mentioned, the size is very good. I think Mignon means mini in Italian. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's definitely very small. Let's try to compare it to the Vilfa Uniform. So I have the Uniform here, and as you can see, it's uh, around the same size for both of them. If you take off the hopper here, then it's actually a little bit smaller. It's not a flimsy grinder though, the weight is pretty substantial and when you hold it in the hand you really get that feeling that it's quality all the way through. It weighs in at 5.5 kilo slash 12 pounds, so it's definitely pretty sturdy. If I have to nitpick a bit, I have to say that I'm not a huge fan of that little sticker they got here on the front with the name on it. It would be nicer if it was engraved or something like that. The grinder also really excels when it comes to sound, or should I say lack of sound. Eureka has done an amazing job here. I remember back in the days when I found out how much my grinder annoyed my roommates in the morning. I think I had some cheap Cuisinart grinder and it just sounded like a jackhammer. With this one here, I don't think you're going to get any enemies if you use it early in the morning. If you don't count manual grinders, I'm pretty confident in saying that this is one of the most quiet grinders out there. Of course, Eureka also has their own slightly smaller model called Silencio, which is supposed to be even more quiet but that would be the only other option I could think of. Of course, all people are different when it comes to sound, but I'm the kind of person who can't stand sudden loud noises, so this is really a plus. One of the hottest topics in espresso grinders recently has been single dosing and zero retention grinders. Historically, if you look around in the grinder market, almost all of them had huge hoppers where you'd put a bag of beans, or at least it used to be like that. But this idea of adding a bunch of beans to the hopper has some problems, especially if you're a home user, because it's just different from how it works in a coffee shop. If you have a whole bag of beans stuck in the hopper, they're gonna get exposed to air and light, so they're gonna go stale pretty fast. Then there's another thing. What if you have some other beans and you suddenly want to pull a shot of them? Uh, you can't really do that if you already have a full hopper. So you could say that the idea of a full hopper kind of comes from a different coffee paradigm. A paradigm where you just used espresso blends and the freshness, maybe it was less important. For sure, most people who are brewing specialty coffee at home are already single dosing for pour over. So I think it's not that strange that people want to do the same with espresso. Most traditional espresso grinders get the inspiration from the professional gear and that's a problem because you can argue that a full hopper is a totally different kind of thing in a coffee shop where you need to be able to work fast and where you go through a bunch of coffee every day. At home you're probably only going to pull like one or two shots in the morning so it's not really the same situation. Of course there can be situations where you have some visitors and you want to be able to pull a lot of shots back to back but that's probably not the most common scenario for most normal people. So I would argue that single dosing isn't just a fad, it actually does make some sense in real life. 
On the other hand, it's also really convenient to have the option to add a bunch of beams to the hopper and just get a consistent dose every time. I also understand people who want to work that way. What I really like with the Specialita is that you can go both ways. When you fill up the hopper and use the time-based dosing function, uh, you get a really precise amount of coffee every time. And you don't actually have to fill up the hopper completely, you can just go half and maybe that's enough that you'll go through it in two or three days and you won't really end up with any stale beans. So the way the time-based dosing works is that you have these buttons here and then you can adjust how long time it's gonna, going to grind down to one tenth of a second. And then you have these two presets here, two cups and one cups. And then if you want to go out of it into continual grinding, you just hold them down and now you're in manual mode. The weight-based dosing works really well and you can really tweak your dose and then it will be very consistent from time to time. Another thing people talk a lot about in relation to single dosing is grind retention. Many old espresso grinders would retain quite a bit of coffee every time you grind. And that's a problem because either you get some old uh, stale coffee when you pull your shot or uh, you would have to purge some uh, beans through it and that would essentially just be a waste of coffee. So in the long run you would waste a lot of beans uh, purging. I actually find that the main reason that you have some uh, retention with this Specialita is because some of the small particles will kind of popcorn up when you're grinding and then they will kind of like get stuck on the side here and not make it down into the burrs. So the issue isn't that the shoot or the internal pathway retains a lot of grinds, it's more that they tend to get stuck up here. It's actually pretty easy to avoid this when you're grinding a single dose, you can just wait for it to come down to this level and then you can kind of like fit in the hover stopper here and then that will act as a kind of a lid so the beams don't really pop on. So when you do this you actually only get very minimal retention. I think you will average around 0.2 to 0.3 grams which is around the same as the niche zero. In the online coffee communities there's also been a bunch of interesting small single doser mods around the Mignon. Some people have made a dosing funnel by cutting a bit of plastic pipe and someone has even made a 3D printing design for the Specialita. I got curious and printed the design and I have to say it works quite well. So the way it works is just you have this little dosing funnel here and then you have the tamper. Then you just lift off the hover and then you slide the funnel in here and then you put your dose in and then you have the tamper here on top. If you want to do it yourself, I'll put a link to the files down in the description. I like this mod and uh, that it also has a tamper because that will help to keep an even pressure on the beams when they're being ground and theoretically that should help with the uniformity. One thing I should mention if you want absolute zero retention is that you can use this uh, little uh, dust blower here and then it will actually fit inside the tamper here and then you can give it a little flow and uh, that will help to push out the last bits of grounds and then you can get down to a really low retention. Let's run some tests with the Specialita and the single dosing mod and see how much it retains. I will grind a dose of 15 grams three times and note down the results. Obviously we also have to talk about grind quality. The grounds are very nice and fluffy and clumping is pretty much minimal. Since this is a flat burr grinder you do get some additional clarity in the cup. Compared to conical grinders like the JX Pro I feel like there are some additional nuances in the cup. It's like there's a wider spectrum of flavors compared to uh, when you use conical burrs, especially when it comes to aftertaste and the more fruity notes. I think when it comes to top-notch grinders in that below 800 to 1000 US dollars range, at the moment it's mainly a discussion between the Sete, the Niche Zero and then the Specialita. So it's kind of that level it's at. 
The Niche Zero can also be used for filter coffee with decent results, but I wouldn't really recommend the special litter for that. First of all, it has this stepless adjustment here, so it's just a bit more difficult to find back to your old settings for espresso. And even though it's doable, the grind quality isn't that outstanding. I brewed a few uh, V60s with it and quickly decided that I was only going to use it for espresso. In my opinion, the ideal coffee setup at home is a hand grinder for brewed coffee and an electric grinder for espresso. That way you don't have to fiddle around with adjustments all the time and you get the best from both worlds. I don't think it's a lot of work to manually grind for pour over, but for espresso it's a lot harder because uh, turning the crank at those super fine settings is just really difficult. So let's say you grind a dose for one minute and then your shot is uh, clocking the porta filter, then you have to grind again and dial in. And if you have to do that two or three times in a row, it becomes pretty tiresome. I know a lot of you guys who watch the channel are interested in manual grinders with espresso capability, but uh, personally, I think if you want to have the most convenience and the most enjoyment out of espresso and ultimately the best shots, uh, an electric grinder is the way to go because uh, you're less lazy when it comes to dialing in. So what are some of the things I wish were better with this grinder? Well, there are a few things that are not perfect. The adjustment wheel here is uh, pretty handy for dialing in, but sometimes I wish that it was a little bit bigger and had more numbers to make it easier to remember. Also, sometimes I feel like I'm a little bit close to the zero point where the burrs are touching. It mostly happens when I'm grinding these kind of like Scandinavian ultra light roast espresso and I'm using the robot which really requires a fine grind, but uh, I'm kind of close to the burr rub. In the five months I've had the grinder, it hasn't been a problem, but uh, it's just something I've had in the back of my mind. Okay, time for the verdict. I think the Eureka Mignon Specialita is probably the ideal espresso grinder for most people. I'm saying most people, because there will definitely be some who just want a dedicated single dose espresso grinder, and for those it doesn't really make sense to pay the extra money for the weight-based timing function. But for the rest of us who are not firmly in one camp or the other, this grinder here just ticks all the boxes. It's small, silent, and it looks great. And so far the build quality also seems uh, really good. The Specialita was released in 2018, and so far I haven't heard anybody with uh, complaints about the long-term durability. It's worth pointing out that the Eureka is a quite old company. I think they have their 100 years anniversary this year, so that's also kind of reassuring. A company doesn't get 100 years old if they don't make at least decent products. Do you have a Specialita at home or one of the other grinders in the Mignon series? What do you think about it? Do you still want a grinder with a hover or are you all in on single dosing? I would love to hear from you down in the comment section. If you're new here then consider hitting the subscribe button down here somewhere and if you want to learn about other coffee brewing tools and techniques then check out some of the videos right here. That's it for today, I'll see you in another coffee video very soon. Mm -hmm.